Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at something I call the Marvel style photo flash effect. All right, if you're a big Marvel fan like me, you know that they have a certain style of a lot of the openings. And uh, I, I want to show you how to create this flashing photo thing. You have to use After Effects because you can't do this in Premiere Pro, but you can easily copy and paste, which makes things so much easier. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the kind of effect that I'm talking about where you see photos flashing very quickly and they're actually coming down. They're, they're from the top to the bottom and they're blurring as they do that. And in this particular one, it ends up inside a, a 3D texture, inside the text. You've probably seen this. It's in the text, in the texture, and then you zoom out and you see that. So I wanted to make this for my buddy's channel. Uh, this was a little while ago and uh, the same thing. So here's what I came up with. I took a whole bunch of photos of my buddy Dave Helmley and it's in that texture. I'm using Cinema 4D to make a real 3D model and that's the final result. So all of that photo stuff was just to make that one texture right there and then back the camera away. So uh, that was that. Now, here's my example in Premiere Pro. And if I stop and go frame by frame, you can see that each one of the new images goes over top of the old image and it's blurred. Uh, I also have an adjustment layer because what Marvel did is they went from that yellow orange to a red and all the way at the top, I have an adjustment layer doing that color effect. So it's from one color to another hue change. And then I've also got a transform where it's zooming out. So it starts a little bit closer and zooms out to the end. You don't have to do that. And then I've got some text over top of it. But here's the big thing, the hard thing to do in Premiere Pro. You can see here I've got, in that short example, I've got 52, sorry, 50, 49, 50, 50 images here that I had to use. And you can only show so many on this screen. Um, I'm holding the control key on Windows, the command key on Mac, and scrolling on the left header area and showing you what I have. And if we zoom in, you can see what's happening. This clip is only 10 frames long. Each clip is only 10 frames long and they overlap for five frames. So the animation is five frames and you're not really meant to take time to look at each one of these. It's a stylistic effect that's just going by and you can add whatever kind of sound, music or, or what have you. But that's the idea here is to make that overlap. And like I said, if you're doing it with 10 images, it's not that hard, but if, if this was 50 or 100 or 500, there is no way you're gonna make 500 tracks and drop each one in. But After Effects can do this so much easier and you can copy and paste. So I only use After Effects as the overlap maker. Everything else I do in Premiere Pro. So let's jump into After Effects and I'll show you how easy this is. So in After Effects, I'm gonna create a new comp click on this button down here. And in my example, I'm, I'm just creating uh, HD, but you can make it any uh, size you want. And I need to import uh, the photos. Just double click here on the panel to import. And I'm gonna bring all of these in. And while they're still selected, drag them into the timeline and they show up. So one of the big differences between Premiere Pro and After Effects is Premiere Pro can have multiple things on a track. After Effects is a layer. So everything like Photoshop is on a layer. So we now have 50 layers of these photos. The problem is they're the wrong size. So I'm gonna go over here to the right, type in 10, 
and now my playhead is at 10 frames. I'll hold the Alt key and the right bracket, Option right bracket on the Mac to trim them all to 10 frames. If you don't do this step, the next step will use the full size. So watch what happens. Alt bracket, boom. They're now all 10 frames. They're all stacked up on top of each other uh, and they're all still selected. They have to be selected for the next operation. Go to the animation menu, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, overlap, and I'll put five in there. Five frame overlap, boom. And there it is. They're all overlap. Forget about the size problems right now. We'll fix that in Premiere Pro. But they're all overlapped. Now, the next thing you need to do is not copy what you have selected. It's kind of idiotic, but, but uh, After Effects forces you, well, it remembers which one you selected first. So you've got to go all the way up to the top. So you can see I'm zoomed up to the top here. Go all the way down to the bottom, shift select the bottom, now copy. Now you've gonna, you're gonna have them in the right order. If you don't do that, deselect, select the top, shift select the bottom, copy, it'll be the in, inverted uh, order in Premiere Pro. So it's bottom to top instead of top to bottom. So it basically, it, the overlap is hidden behind the other one. So just do it that way. Back into Premiere Pro, I'll create um, a new sequence. And in my example, I'm just going to use uh, HD. All right, let me go back to the beginning here and paste. and I'll zoom in. So there they are. All the tracks were made automatically. Every single one of those has come in. So again, this one is showing and then that one comes in and the overlap is what you see. Now, I saved a, um, uh, I should have shown you this before, but I saved a transform effect. And you can just add a transform effect on the first one and then save it. So if I go back to my overlap and show you that transform effect, transform is in the effects. You just search for transform. Uh, there it is. Drag it onto the clip. And here I've got one, two, three, four, five. So the frame goes from the top, so you can't see it, to where you can see it. And very important, I'm changing my shutter angle to 75 and uh, turning this option off, and that gets me the blur. If you don't do that, it just pops in, pops in, pops in, but you want that blur uh, to happen. So once you have that created, two keyframes, right click, and save that preset and anchor it to the endpoint. Name it something useful. I did here. So all of these are still selected in my effects. And I called mine blur move. When I drag this down, you see how everything becomes selected? As long as they're selected before I drag this, they all have that feature. Now, the other thing that you need to do is in the properties, again, with all these selected, is just choose the fill. And that will fit their scale. And boop, 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 boop. There you go. Boop, 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 boop. And I tried to find a slide transition, and there is a slide transition, but again, it doesn't blur. And it's really hard to play these damn tr slide. Look at, eh, 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 eh. this is actually easier for Premiere Pro to play back because transform is GPU accelerated. So if I didn't have to stop and explain this, you could easily 
jump into After Effects, import them, trim them, um, and then use Keyframe Assistant, copy and paste them. If somebody said they want them longer, I would never go through all of this in the timeline and try to change them. I'd just start again. I go back to After Effects, change the trim amount, which you can do with them all selected very easily before you stagger them, before you sequence the layers, copy, paste, put them in, transform. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And uh, I think it makes a, a cool looking effect. Like I said, here's the my overlap for a stylized kind of look. Uh, any color tints that you want to add to this, any music that you want to add to this, I think that looks pretty cool. And uh, I haven't seen that any kind of transition or anything else that looks like that Marvel kind of look. I think this is the only way to get it where one physical uh, clip is moving in front of the other clip. Hey, if you found this useful, take a moment and subscribe. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get all jazzed up watching Marvel movies and uh, show you some cool things that maybe you can find useful.